So now we can talk about hydraulic ele elevators briefly. Um, typically, we look at them as um, being um, suitable for a low number of floors. They run at lower speeds. Um, they have a, a requirement for space for these plungers that raise and lower them. Um, they may have lower associated costs with them, but th I really can't confirm that. Um, that would change. I think that would need to be taken out to bid to determine. But there are some advantages to it. Um, one of them uh, is in this uh, visual of the Apple Store. You'll notice that a hydraulic elevator many times has this ability to have no overhead lifting devices. So we see no overhead cable systems, no motors mounted anywhere. And so the, um, the ability to create a clean aesthetic of the installation um, easily, more easily achieved with a hydraulic system. Um, they have some inherent um, safety features and some quietness to them. But once again, the technology is always changing on elevators. So what I say today doesn't necessarily hold true a year or a couple of years from now. So um, the basic um, components of an elevator, a hydraulic elevator, should I say, um, we still have the cab, the same track system. Uh, but what's missing is the counterbalance weight system because now we have a long plunger, a hydraulic cylinder pushing up to raise the elevator cab. So we need as much plunger length below grade as we do above, and that can be a limitation sometimes on its installation. We still have the requirement for a pit. Um, and we have this idea now of a fluid tank and pumping system. And those create noise. Um, you'll hear this many times in hydraulic systems. Um, even if you're, on the, if you're on a floor and not in the cab, you'll hear the motor energize and a whining noise from the hydraulic pump. So many times these are located, uh, remotely located to help reduce that problem with noise. Um, a couple of variations on the theme. This is more like the Apple Store one where we're seeing a cantilevered car design on rails in order to clean up the aesthetic here. I'm not exactly sure that this is the installation, but this is what I suspect is going on here. So we have this cantilever design. Um, here we have multiple pistons leading on both sides of it. Um, so there's many different variations in hydraulic um, elevator configurations and really um, uh, you determine those by the, the vendors that you're selecting and or um, looking at for your project. Um, a graphic um, that I think is important because this would be part of what would become technical documentation for your projects. So we have the hoist way. Um, we're seeing the rails indicated here, where the door opening is, those kind of clearances. We'll talk a little bit more about these details when we talk about accessibility. And then we have this idea of, of um, an elevation view of a hydraulic elevator, and then that requirement of the travel pit. Um, and, re and you'll note here that it's the travel plus two, two foot six inches. So the travel that's two stories, we've got two stories of hydraulic travel going along with it. You'll note the machine room is also right with the hoist way um, in this case, but the idea of um, this needing a, lo a locating, um, taking up uh, floor space, and also the noise and the noise control of um, emitted from the hydraulic pumping systems here. So something uh, for consideration. Um, one of the things, and, and actually this is about a traction system, there's an inherent safety to the hydraulic system um, in that you're always on top of a column of fluid. Um, so it would be uh, uh, an elevator failure um, would be relatively safe. The hydraulic fluid would leak out and the car would settle down. Um, at a controlled rate. Um, in the case of traction elevators, the hoist ways have locking mechanisms. So, and this is a traction elevator, now a cable lifting system. And in the event of cable failure, um, there are these wedges that would engage with the guide rail in order to lock the elevator in place. So, if the cable breaks, a um, lever is released, engaging these locking mechanisms, preventing the car from falling down the shaftway at a high rate of speed. So um, there's this kind of um, reduction in the uh, complexity, should I say, between a, um, a hydraulic elevator and a, um, a traction elevator. So that concludes um, the comparison of the two. And um, next we'll look at some issues of uh, interior design and accessibility.